prior to coming in to change this dressing, about 30 minutes ahead of time, I came in, asked my patient to rate his pain on that scale from zero to 10, where zero is no pain and 10 is the worst he could imagine. He told me his pain was about a four, and I asked him how it was this morning when he had his dressing changed, and he told me that it really did escalate during the dressing change because he hadn't received any pain medication ahead of time. So I went out, I checked his chart, I brought him his pain medication, and now it's 30 minutes later. So I'm going to return to the room and ask him to re-rate his pain. I gave you that pain medication about 30 minutes ago, and I wanted to recheck your pain. Again, on that scale of zero to 10, what number is your pain right now? A one? Much better. Okay, then we can go ahead and get started. The supplies that I'm going to need for this procedure are an isolation gown, an isolation mask, including eyewear. You wouldn't need this on a patient that's not on isolation precautions if you weren't irrigating the wound. Because I'm irrigating, there's a chance that I could be splashed in the face or mouth or on my clothing. That's why I'm protecting myself. I won't be wearing the mask so that you can hear me clearly. The additional supplies that I'll need are a blue drape to put under my patient so that when I'm irrigating the wound and the fluids run off, they won't soil his bed. I have a wound measuring guide. I have some sterile cotton tipped applicators. I've got some tape for securing his dressing when I'm finished. Normal saline for irrigating the wound. One ABD pad, three gauze sponges that are four by fours. Irrigation tray, and this has a bulb syringe in it. A sterile field for setting up all my supplies and a pair of sterile gloves. Additionally, I have a pair of regular gloves for removing his old dressing. I'm going to position my patient with the blue absorbent pad under him and roll him to his side towards me and put a pillow behind his back to make him comfortable. Of course, I've washed my hands before beginning the procedure and I've also provided privacy for my patient. Note that I've afforded my patient privacy by only uncovering the portion that I need to access to change his dressing. I'll raise the bed to a position of comfort for myself so I don't strain my back. And I'll put down the side rail so I'm not leaning over it. I'll don my regular clean gloves and remove the old dressing. As I pull the tape, I'm careful to hold my patient's skin so that it's not too painful for him. Throughout the whole procedure, I'm assessing my patient to see how he's tolerating this. Are you doing okay, Mr. Jackson? Wonderful. Let me know if you experience any pain that's not tolerable, okay? I'm going to lift the dressing out, put it in this hand, and I want to be careful not to touch the wound bed itself as I go to remove this packing. If the packing is stuck in the wound bed, I will drip a little bit of normal saline over the gauze, let it sit for a few minutes, and then pull it out. I don't want to disturb healing layers of tissue within the wound bed. Again, I'm only touching the gauze. As I pull out the gauze, I'm noting the number of pieces of gauze. So I see that I have one ABD pad, two four by fours, and then two four by fours within the wound. That's important because I need to chart that later. As I look at the dressing, I'm noting the color of the drainage, the amount, whether it's saturated, just a moderate amount or scant amount, if there's any odor. Also the type of drainage. Is it serous, serosanguinous, sanguinous, purulent? I'll discard of my dressing. According to HSC's policy, some institutions dictate that you would throw it into red bag biohazard. Other institutions would dictate that you throw it into regular trash. I follow my agency's policies and here it's okay to discard this in regular trash. The next thing I want to assess is the actual wound itself. I'll take my wound measuring guide that's probably located in my patient's room. If not, I would have gotten this from the clean utility room. And I want to measure the length and the width, followed by the depth. The length is always head to toe. I have 13 and a half centimeters length. Notice that I'm not touching the wound measuring guide to my patient. I don't want to contaminate the wound bed because I need to get that sterile culture. And I don't want to contaminate this wound measuring device because I can reuse it. Now I'll measure at the widest point, the width, and that's two and three quarter centimeters wide. And now I'll measure the depth. Using a sterile Q-tip, I'm careful not to touch the Q-tip itself. I'll put this in the deepest part of the wound, 
and then put my fingers at skin level and bring it away. I was careful not to disturb the tissue bed itself and I'll measure it holding it without actually touching and that's three centimeters deep. Now I want to assess the wound bed. The wound bed looks as though it has healthy granulation tissue. I do not see any undermining, any tunneling, or any eschar. I do know that the surrounding skin is a little bit pink, so I'm going to make sure that I have that completely dry before I dress this wound to prevent further skin breakdown. Now I need to stage the wound, and this wound appears to be a stage three. Remember, if you have eschar in a wound, you cannot stage that wound because you do not know how deep it is. Now that I've assessed the pieces of dressing that I've removed from the wound, the drainage on that dressing, I've staged the wound, measured it, and noted characteristics about the wound bed itself. I'm ready to set up my sterile supplies and begin the next steps. I take these gloves off, ball it up, go underneath, throw these away, and now I'll set up my sterile supplies. The first thing I want to do is set up my sterile field. Reach in. I'm careful to hold it high enough that it doesn't hit my table. And the part that I'm touching is the part that needs to go down, so I'll make sure this is facing me at all times as I open up my drape. Touching just the one inch border. I open it up and I will lay it down. If I need to straighten it out, that's fine. I won't lean over the sterile field and I'll only touch that outer one inch border. Now I'll proceed to empty all of my supplies onto my sterile field. Notice that I'm gonna take a step away from my sterile field. My table is clean, dry, and waist high. So I'm gonna take a step away and turn toward my patient so that as I'm opening this, bacteria won't be falling onto my sterile field. I'll open it, not letting it touch my hands. Once it's open, I come over my sterile field just long enough to drop it in the center. And I'll do that with the rest of my dressings as well. my bulb syringe. Again, away from my sterile field. I'm going to hold the container as I come over my sterile field and dump. And I'm careful not to touch the inside because that's where I'm going to be putting my dressings. I'll set this to the side. And now I need to pour normal saline into here for my dressings and normal saline into my container for irrigating. I'll carefully Take this off of my sterile field and bring it around to the side. Notice I'm not going across my sterile field. I take my normal saline and I check the expiration date to make sure it's not expired. I make sure that the fluid itself is clear, there's no sediment, and that the color is correct. If this is a brand new bottle and I open it, I have to write date, time, initials. It's good for 24 hours. If this bottle had already been opened, I would check to make sure that it was within the 24 hour period then I would take off the cap and I would lip a little into my trash can and that simply means as you pour, you roll your bottle a little bit and then you would pour it into your containers. My bottle's brand new. Not touching my container and not hovering over my sterile field, I pour some normal saline in there, coming around the outside edge. I'll pour some normal saline into my irrigation container. And now I'm finished with my normal saline. Before I don my sterile gloves, I want to make sure that I have everything prepared as I need it. And I do. Again, I'm checking on my patient. Are you still doing okay? He tells me he is. I let him know that we're going to be finished before long. We're getting ready to irrigate his wound. Now I'll come to the side table and I will don my sterile gloves. I'm only holding this inner lapel of the package giving it a slight pinch so that it doesn't fold back on itself. 
and my thumb is going to be facing out. So I grab the inner portion of the cuff and separate it. With palm facing up, I don this glove. Notice I'm only holding the inside. Now I'll hold my package over here on the corner so it doesn't scoot around. Get my fingers under the cuff of the left glove and move my thumb out of the way so I don't contaminate it on my wrist or my gown. Again, my palm is up. That's the way the gloves are packaged. I'm pulling it on, not contaminating my gloved hand. And now I'm sterile. So my hands now have to stay above waist height and in front of me at all times. And I cannot turn my back on my sterile field also. Now I'm ready to begin irrigating the wound. I'll take my bulb syringe, coming around the side here. I get some normal saline. This may be a little cool, okay? Be careful when you're irrigating a wound not to point your bulb syringe directly at the wound bed as you can disturb healthy tissue and cause harm. You also don't want to put any of the solution above on the skin itself because then you're pulling bacteria from the skin down into the wound. Again, not pointing directly at the wound. And I'm going to irrigate the wound itself. And what I'm doing here is rinsing away any surface bacteria. I'm going to irrigate until the fluid runs clear and it's running clear. Now I'll put my syringe back, not crossing over any of my sterile items. If your patient's wound has a little bit of normal saline left in there, I want to get that out because I don't want it to be too wet in there. So I'll take one of my four by fours and I'm going to fold it in half. Now, when I'm sterile, if my hands become wet, they're no longer considered sterile. Therefore, I'm going to hold at the very top of my gauze and set this into the wound and allow the fluid to wick up the gauze. When the fluid gets to here, I will take this and discard of it because I don't want the water to touch my glove. I will gently set this in the wound bed and just allow the water to wick up the gauze. I've gotten all the fluid. Notice that when I drop this in the trash can, I'm not putting my hands below my waist. I'm just coming over and dropping. I want to take apart two of my four by fours because that's what I know it will take to fill this wound. And this is a wet to dry dressing change. It's important for wounds, I'll ball this up a little bit and put it in here. It's important for wound beds to stay moist because that's how they're going to heal from the bottom up. If they dry out, that's problematic and it will leave a huge scar as opposed to allowing that wound to heal. I'm done being sterile at this point, so I'm moving forward maintaining a septic technique. I've wrung out my dressing so that it's no longer dripping, but it's still fairly moist so that the wound bed stays nice and wet. I separate it apart. We want to make our gauze nice and fluffy. That way, when we put it in the wound bed, it allows for air circulation. I'm going to gently lay this in my hand. And my right hand is going to be a dispenser, if you will. And notice I'm not packing this gauze. I want to keep it fluffy. And I'm just going to pull it out of my hand and pack the wound. I'll start at one end of the wound and move across. Alternately, if it's a larger wound, you can start filling from the bottom up. As long as all areas of the wound bed itself, I'm packing this in like ribbon candy, in nice folds so that every single area of this inner wound bed is covered with moist gauze. I'm careful not to poke or jab the gauze in. I'll wring out my second piece and open it. Notice that I opened my gauze prior to putting it in the normal saline. That makes it much easier to get these opened up all the way. Lay it in my hand, again leaving it nice and fluffy. And starting where I left off, continue to fill this wound bed very gently. And as you can see, the entire wound bed is filled with moist gauze. That'll allow it to heal.
Now remember earlier we pointed out that this patient has redness around the opening of this wound. We want to make sure that we dry all the normal saline so that he doesn't have further skin breakdown. I'll take my gauze and I'll start drying just by patting around the wound itself. Then I'll move farther away from the wound. I don't want to bring bacteria that's down here back up to the wound, so I did around the wound first and then moved away. That skin is dry. I'll discard this. Now to maintain the dryness around the outer area, I'll put two 4x4s on the top of my dressing, followed by an ABD. The blue side needs to face up. That's the moisture resistant side. I'll then take the tape that's also located in the patient's room. I'll gauge the piece that I need, come away from my patient and tear it, place it on the dressing. Same thing here. Making sure the tape's secure. Just about finished, Mr. Jackson. Are you doing okay? He tells me he is. And that his pain has been very well managed throughout this procedure. Now I want to put my date, time, and initials on this dressing. I've written it on a separate piece of tape that I'll put along the edge here. Now before I take off my gloves, I want to remove this absorbent pad. And discard. Now I'll remove my gloves, grabbing from the palm, balling it up in my left hand, going underneath to protect myself, discarding. I'll come around to the other side and remove the pillow and make my patient comfortable. But first, I have to raise the side rail. Anytime that you walk around your patient's bed, make sure you're walking closest to your patient. Remove the pillow. And get my patient in a comfortable position. I'll lower the patient's bed back to its lowest possible position. I'll clean up my supplies, and now I'll take off my isolation gown. I'm going to untie the neck first, then the waist, reaching underneath, grabbing the gown, pull out the sleeve, do that on the other side, holding just the inner portion. I roll it away from myself. I'll discard this in the linen cart. Finally, I'll wash my hands and document the procedure. A document is how the patient tolerated the procedure, the number of dressings that I removed from the wound, the characteristics of the drainage that was on the dressing, the measurements of the wound, the stage of the wound, and describe the characteristics of the wound bed itself. I also need to make sure that I document the number of dressings that I replaced into the wound bed. That's important for the next person so they know that they've removed all the dressings that I have placed in the wound bed.